morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome to the AI for Good Global Summit, all year, always online. I'm Charlotte Kahn from the ITU, the International Telecommunication Union. Like most of the world, the AI for Good Global Summit has gone digital with weekly online programming, allowing us to reach even more people in 2020. AI for Good perspectives offer expert insights, global visions, and shared solutions for the AI for Good global community. Today we bring you the first episode of Etri's AI for making a better tomorrow on the subject of spatiotemporal algal bloom prediction using deep learning. Etri is the National AI Research Institute of the Republic of Korea. So let's take a look at this short video about Etri. Three revolutions changed human history. And now, another great revolution is about to transform our daily lives. AI. It's the age when imagination becomes reality. A new era in which everything is connected, where artificial intelligence becomes commonplace, and where a reality beyond the bounds of human imagination is realized. We at Etri are preparing for this new era. Faster than the changing world, we at Etri are leading the core technologies of the fourth industrial revolution through innovative research and development that reaches beyond everyone's expectations. We are creating a better world. Etri, the National Intelligence Transformation Research Institute. There are three different uh, meanings, I mean, interpretation of AI for my uh, own uh, experience. Firstly, main people are, are consider AI is a technology, especially one of the software or uh, inter, uh, information technology, very specific. And the second uh, meaning, second interpretation is AI services. Based on the AI technology, we, we can also uh, use some computing powers or some uh, uh, network technology, then we can uh, invent or you can, we can also provide some nice AI services. Some example is, uh, is the uh, some uh, Go uh, playing game between the AI, uh, AlphaGo, and a real person, Mr. Uh, Isedor. Many people are regarding this uh, event as a AI technology, but when uh, realize when implemented these uh, AI services, the Google uh, has a big uh, size of a computing system behind, and also uh, the high speed network has been double, doubly uh, linked with this uh, uh, AI, uh, this computer, and the the space, the hotel where the game has been uh, uh, organized. That means if you implement some AI service, you need AI uh, algorithm and data, and also supercomputing infrastructure, and also high-speed network. This, in, uh, this is the second interpretation for me. And finally, AI is some paradigm which impact which give a uh, great impact in not only in the technology, but also in social and environmental uh, impact through the AI uh, paradigm. So many politicians, uh, if, including our uh, president uh, Moon, when, invite, when he invited some, uh, uh, some Japanese uh, businessmen, they insist the first is AI, the second is AI, and third is AI. In this case, AI is the paradigm. So uh, I, I can give you three different in, in, uh, meanings or interpretation of AI in this context. Now, let me hand over to our expert host, Dr. Miran Choi. Dr. Choi is Principal Researcher and Standardization Specialist at ETRI. Dr. Choi. Thank you, Charlotte. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Miran Choi from Etri, Korea. Thank you very much for joining us in our perspective session. 
The first episode is on the subject of spatial temporal algal bloom prediction using deep learning. This project uses deep learning to predict algal blooms a week in advance. Then it makes possible to suppress the algal bloom earlier and efficiently at a low cost. Currently, this project has been applied to the Techeonghu Lake in Korea. Next, let me introduce the speaker of this session. Dr. Jiyong Kim is the managing director of the Smart Data Research Section at Atri, leading one of the AI projects. He received the MS degree from Seoul National University in Korea, and his research topics include big data analysis, machine learning, and IoT. Now, let's watch the presentation. Hi, everyone. My name is Jiyoung Kim. I'm leading the research project of the spatial temporal algal bloom prediction using deep learning. Before this presentation, it would be better to play the introduction video. After that, I will explain our research more technically and deeply. Taechonghu Lake contains pristine nature and has a mysterious view of the cliff. The place where migratory birds, winds, and people took a break turned green. The cause is blue-green algae. Due to climate change, global warming, drought, and so on, algal blooms spread across the country. The algal blooms are threatening us with dangerous toxic substances. Algal bloom has already emerged as a serious global environmental problem. The biggest worries for our people is the safety of drinking water sources. To handle this, the Korean government has established new technology policies. By 2022, Et Turi has been developing spatio-temporal AI blue-green algae prediction technology based on direct readable water quality complex sensor and hyperspectral image. There are two key technologies here. First, real-time high-density algae measurement. Currently, it takes two days from sampling to getting final results for algae monitoring. Etturi aims to measure in real time using direct readable probe sensors. We increase measurement density in two ways. Fixed sensors mounted on buoys and moving sensors mounted on water drones. The big data on water quality is collected from the fixed and moving sensors and hyperspectral imaging systems. By analyzing this big data, we improve the accuracy of algal bloom prediction. Previously, it was difficult to predict or analyze algae due to the lack of data. Now we can make the accurate prediction of algal blooms using deep learning. In Etturi, we aim for 90% accuracy in predicting algal blooms above the world's highest levels. This enables early suppression of algae through preemptive measures in advance. Etturi's sensor network-based AI prediction technology can be applied to various industries such as environment, weather, transportation, and agriculture. With a total market forecast of $220 billion by 2025, we can expect to gain global market competitiveness. Etturi will provide practical solutions to reduce public anxiety about algal blooms. 
through advanced ICT to realize what is imagined, et tu re will open a bright future. In this section, I'll explain the introduction shortly. Some explanation is already mentioned in the introduction video. As possible as I can, I'll skip the repetition. What is algal bloom? An algal bloom means rapid increase or accumulation in the population of algae in water system. It directly affects water quality and makes people in danger with toxin substances. In many countries, in addition to Korea, algal bloom makes problem. This situation comes from climate change, global warming, drought, and so on. It is a critical environmental problem that makes water pollution and economic losses. Our research goal is to predict an algal bloom earlier and exactly. If we predict algal bloom earlier, we can suppress the bloom more efficiently at low cost. There are several efficient methods for suppression. For example, algae harvesting ship, water surface aerator, flood gate opening, Euro, uh, ultrasonic algae controller, yellow soil spraying, and so on. In spite of all these useful methods, Late response to algae bloom takes a lot of cost and time for recovery. In the total algal bloom control system, my project team is focusing on in red box. We are trying to predict algal bloom exactly using deep learning with various kinds of data collected. There are two main challenges in forecasting algal blooms. First of all, algal bloom data set shows severe data imbalance characteristics. The target event algal blooms are rare, occurred a few in Korea. But it happens, it makes severe problems and takes time and money to recover. But anyway, it is rare, so prediction model is difficult to make. To mitigate data imbalance, we adopted several techniques such as data augmentation in order to maximize your forecasting performance. I'll explain more details in next slide. Another challenge is that we must forecast broad area while only small portion of target areas are available for deep learning because of the lack of available environmental data. We make a hybrid model, use machine learning and simulation techniques together to overcome the lack of data. Handling extreme data imbalance. Handling data imbalance is very important for accurate prediction because machine learning algorithms may be biased toward the majority classes. While minority classes are often more important in practice, we utilize two techniques to handle data imbalance. Since the data distribution of uh, chlorophyll A concentration is extremely skewed, we apply the log transformation to make distribution conform to normality. Log transformation is a simple but useful technique to increase validity of the applied analysis, as many of methods assume data normality. Moreover, log transformation helps the model to output only positive values, which perfectly suits our case. In addition, we applied a sampling technique called SMOT. One of the most intuitive data level techniques is to either undersample the majority class or under, oversample the minority class. We should avoid undersampling because we may lose useful information, especially when the size of dataset is very limited. On the other hand, 
Our sampling can preserve all the information currently available. The simplest of sampling method would be replicating or randomly sampling minority instances. However, it may lead to overfitting and potentially create confusion in training. Therefore, we adopted synthetic minority of sampling techniques in order to increase samples in minority regions. The main idea of SMOT is to generate new instances using gradient distance vectors to the nearest neighbors. It is originally proposed for classification problems so that we adjust it to regression problem setting. Experimental setup. For the experiment, we use daily data collected from water quality monitoring station at Daechung Lake during 2012 to 2018. The collected data consists of eight measurements, water temperature, pH, electrical conductivity, dissolved oxygen, total organic carbon, total nitrogen, total phosphorus, and chlorophyll A. As you can see at the bottom, the data distribution of target variable chlorophyll A is extremely skewed that the algal bloom events are very rare. The goal is to accurately predict the concentration of chlorophyll A in 7 days. A convolutional neural network model is a well suited for regression type problems, capturing dependencies in and between time series. Hence, we decided to build a CNN based model. We have conducted four experiments for comparison. Blue line is the baseline with no techniques. Red line uses log transformation. Green line uses oversampling techniques using SMOT. And purple is the hybrid one using both log transformation and SMOT. In the result graphs, the difference looks small, but the false hybrid model is better in most test cases. As you can see, the mitigating techniques we applied help increase R squared while mi minimize mean square error. The fourth model shows the highest R squared and the lowest mean square error, especially when the target chlorophyll A is above 25 mg per cubic meter, which is the boundary line for RG alloc. Let's move on to the second topics, the chlorophyll A estimation for a wide target area. The prediction of chlorophyll A concentration for wide regions is a challenging issue because we only monitor and collect water quality data from several monitoring stations. Consequently, we don't have enough data to train a deep learning model and to perform a prediction of the region. Then, how can we collect the water quality data for wide regions? To overcome the situation, we make use of a hydrodynamic water quality simulation model. By using the sensor data from the monitoring stations, this simulation model can generate water quality data for wide prediction regions. I will explain more details about the overall prediction scenario from the next slide. First, I'd like to explain the environmental fluid dynamic code, the EFDC simulation model, in short. It is three-dimensional hydrodynamics water quality model that can simulate up to 22 stage variables for water systems such as rivers and lakes. The basic structures of the EFDC model is illustrated in Figure 1. It is composed with four main components, including hydrodynamics, water quality, sediment transport, and toxin, 
of the water system. To perform a simulation, virtual grids are used to reflect the complex shape of river. Our study area, the Dachon Lakes area in Gum Rivers, is divided into about 6,000 virtual grids. Among them, we mainly focused on almost 400 cells near Chusori regions here. In the modeling phase, the input data is the sensing water quality data and meteorological data monitored, monitored from the surrounding station of the prediction region. Once the EFDC simulation model is generated, the model can simulate the spatial temporal changes and characteristics of water quality and chlorophyll A concentration of the grid cells. As a result, we can collect time series water quality data for each grid cell in the Chusori regions. These time series water quality data of the regions will be used in the deep learning phase for the chlorophyll A concentration prediction. To perform a chlorophyll A concentration estimation, we use one of the variations of AlexNet, a widely used CNN model. The convolution layer of CNN can extract the spatial association of water quality data among the neighboring cells. The CNN input image was composed of the simulation result and weather data and generated by stacking them in dimensions. Consequently, each image represents in the information of a day. The detailed setup for the CNN model is described in figure below. Experimental result. This slide shows the prediction result of our model in terms of accuracy. Our competitor is the EFDC simulation result that is generated from the real water quality data on the prediction date. We perform three day predictions uh, from August to October in 2018. The average accuracy for 90 days achieved root mean square error is, is 1.06 mg per cubic meters and R square equals 0 0.902. From the result, we proved the our model presents a feasibility accuracy for a chlorophyll A concentration prediction of a spatial temporal regions. By using EFDC simulation, we can perform prediction without the burden of collecting real data for a broad, for a broad region. Now, I've told you everything I want to share today. Summary. We are trying to predict algal bloom based on machine learning for early algae suppression. We encountered two challenges. Challenge one, how can we train prediction models from imbalanced water quality data? Challenge two, how can we estimate chlorophyll A concentration for the broad target area? Future work. We are collecting more data using these sensor devices, and so we hope to get a uh, better result with this data. This is the end of my talk. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your presentation, Dr. Kim. Now, I will ask you two questions on your presentation for the audience. The first question is, I'm not familiar with the EFDC model, but it looks more accurate because it uses hydrodynamic theory and topographical information. Then, 
What are the benefits of using machine learning technique to predict the algal blooms? Right. The FDH model produces accurate and explainable results, but uh, various boundary conditions are needed and model parameters must be laboratory calibrated by domain experts. Such conditions and parameters change, change easily, so it is very difficult, almost impossible to adjust them. So I think machine learning based approach is more available to predict algal bloom. Thank you for your answer, Dr. Kim. Now the second question is, you mentioned that you use convolutional neural network model for the prediction. In my opinion, for the time series data prediction, such as water quality, the LSTM method seems to be more appropriate. Have you tried to use the LSTM for the prediction of algal blooms? Yes. As you mentioned, the LSTM achieves good performance for time series data estimation. And I applied the LSTM for the prediction as well, but it shows a similar result with the CNN model. Therefore, to ease the presentation, we only explain the CNN-based model today. Nowadays, we are developing new ideas with various types of prediction models. So, I wish I could have another chance to show the improvement in RG prediction shortly. Thank you, Dr. Kim, for your detailed explanation. Okay, I hope you all have enjoyed the episode one of AI for Good Perspective presented by Atri today. Thank you for your participation and let me hand it back over to Charlotte for the closing. Well, thank you, Dr. Choi and Dr. Kim for the presentations and inspiring discussions. Please join us again on the 15th of October for another fascinating insight into Etri's advanced work on AI in the Republic of Korea, when the subject will be AI-based language learning technology.